Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Hey guys, it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 532 Tuesdays. We've been doing this talking professionalized wrestling with our good friends from across the nation. And you out there listening, thank you so much, everybody, for keeping it alive. Uh, With us, of course, I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter, uh, here in Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. And uh, with us, first of all, Crumb Kipsy, New York. He's the only one of us that has, has been future endeavored. From the WWE, he is Mad Mike. All we do is win, 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 no matter what, 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 and we throw our hands up. I swear. Hi. Hi. Right. There was somebody on the Indies that used to come out to that. <laughs> and I'm like, what is this song? It is catchy. And then he, and he would job every time. Is it bad that I discover catchy new songs when a wrestler comes out to him? Sword, sword. most of the songs I listened to in college are WWE pay-per-view themes, so nope. Yeah, there's that too. That's my that's my iTunes list. Also with us is our friend in the mainstream media. He is Matt Carlins. Should I sing a rap song now too, or should I think I that's just appropriate? I think st- it's I think it's only. Appropriate. I got so much swagger. I got so much swagger. I got so much swagger. I could lend you half of it. There you go. <laughs> wow, I think it's a real song. <laughs> It's the Matt Carlin. It's not. Single. It should be what Jack Swagger comes out of. Yeah, it should be. It absolutely should be. Uh, and also with us, like this WCW theme. <laughs> new voice with us. He is videographer extraordinaire. Helps us out here around uh, these parts with uh, some of the groups here at Sorgatron Media. Rob Brown with us. Rob Brown yes. PA seventy eight on the Twitter, joining us finally mm-hmm. because I keep forgetting to invite him. Welcome. <laughs> And I'm just I'm just snapping into a slim gym here, Mike. Oh, oh there well, maybe if I don't eat through the wrapper, but <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. he fits right in. Uh, like I said, this is the Wrestling Mayhem the Show. In the big time. Yeah, <laughs> you can take you can check us out at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to this and so many other shows that we are doing around professional wrestling uh, on iTunes, Stitcher, Speaker, iHeartRadio, uh, YouTube, Facebook for video versions uh, all over the place. And great conversations, including the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group, at Mayhem Show on the Twitter. Uh, a lot of you guys have been joining us on all that kind of stuff. And, of course, live here every Tuesday, live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. You can join us in the chat and uh, and talk wrestling with us and, and tell us what you think of things as we go along here in the night. And, of course, we do this 10 p.m. Eastern time every Tuesday, uh, uh, shortly after SmackDown go- Live goes off the air, actually, now these days. Thanks, WWE. You can also drop us a line at 412-206-WMS0. We got a great voicemail uh, this week that we'll be touching on later in the in the show. That makes me remember so I don't forget it in the show. Uh, and also, you can drop us a line to that email address. Good times! <laughs> good times. There were noises in there. Uh, good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And join us on our Patreon page. Uh, so many great people um, um, subscribing and, and contributing to the show, putting their money where, where our mouths are and our microphones are and supporting the show, including the Jennifer and Matthew Carlin's uh, uh, Foundation for Podcast Betterment, uh, our longtime Patreon supporters in uh, Antonio Garza of the Wrestling Revolution dot com. Bo diggity. Woo! And of course, our friends Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town, and Alex Cars. And I think that's everybody. Yeah, that's six. Uh, thank you so much for supporting the show and 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 giving us a little bit that we can help extend the show out to new mayhemers across the nation. So let's get into it. Let's start this pro wrestling podcast by talking about Ultimate Fighting Championship. Yes, let's. 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 Yes. Yes. I watch it on occasion. Let's discuss a profitable and successful promotion, sort of try. <laughs> oh, well, okay, Matt. I, I, you, you were excited when I brought up that this was going to be on the rundown. What is happening with the UFC, in particular, one person? Um, I could, okay, let's try to get this thing down to bare bones. Uh, Conor McGregor 
is a fighter in the UFC. He's super over. He loves to talk. He loves to talk shit and get people riled up. And that's what he's doing. He's promoting a fight. He's fighting. Which Diaz is he fighting? The one who beat him last time. Nate? I hope I got my Diaz's right. I believe it's Nate. Don't hate me. Don't hate me. I always get my Diaz's mixed up. Um, He's going to fight him. And somebody asked him during the news conference, uh, it is Nate. It is hey, Nate. Connor, Brock went and made money for WWE. You love to talk and, you know, trash talk. How about, you know, why don't you go to WWE? And Connor said, um, what did he say, Sorg? You might have the quote right there in front of you. He says, I have thought about WWE, uh, he said on this call. But for the most part, I think these guys are pussies, to be honest. They're messed up pussies, <laughs> if you ask me. Uh, fair play to... Brock, uh, he he got in and fought, but at the end of the day, he was juiced up to the fucking eyeballs. How can you respect that? The other guy, CM Punk, hasn't fought yet, so I don't know about him yet. And you this can, loses a lot without the accent. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm not even trying that accent. We, we I, was, I was gonna say, sort a lot of shouting. Sorry, I didn't know. I didn't know it was that long of a quote. I would I would have thrown on my bad Irish, my bad Irish brogue, and read that out for you. Just call me. Just call me. Uh, just say that Brock Lesnar is fucking juiced to his eyeballs. Yeah, he did. Brock Lesnar be fucking juiced to his eyeballs. Perfect. It's it's like a it, it's like I just got threatened by a leprechaun. Uh, Matt, <laughs> now, it's like, I had to look behind me. Is he here? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now, Matt, Connor and Connor did double down on Twitter, right? Oh. Like, did he? <laughs> Oh yeah, right? yeah, he did. He did. He he wrote on there. Right. I didn't mean uh, no disrespect to the fans, the WWE fans. What I meant to say was that I'd slap the head off your entire roster <laughs> and twice on Sundays. Uh, wow. I love that sneak attack. You know, it starts like sounding like an apology, and then it's like, Boo-boo-bam! yeah, it, <laughs> so it's good. a heel promo. It really is because mm-hmm. he's top heel in the UFC, yeah. and therefore the top heel in all the sports and entertainment. No. If, um, if we weren't already getting show and Shaq at WrestleMania, it would have been show and McGregor, right? I no, I'd rather see Brock and McGregor. <laughs> <laughs> we could we could still do Brock and McGregor. I mean, come on, <laughs> let's, mm-hmm. let's make that happen. <laughs> I don't know if Connor has like a natural matchup like in WWE. Like, I don't know who I would put. Conor McGregor well, in the well, ring against. Let's, let's, I don't know who he maybe maybe his counterpart. He'd, he'd would have be. to go against. It would have to be someone who could talk like huge amounts of trash. It would right. have to be an A plus Mike guy like Cena or like your favorite Kevin Owens. Actually, Kevin Owens would be really interesting because Conor would have a field day talking trash on Kevin Owens, and KO could probably uh, serve it right back to him. So, so, I was so, thinking maybe Enzo, but he'd just he'd just totally kill Enzo. Oh he? yeah, yeah, he would destroy Enzo. Well, well let's, let's look at. It. So of course, of course, uh, It'd be a good twenty minutes leading up to that though. WWE uh, uh, wrestlers responded, and former wrestlers actually. Uh, let, let's just go down some of the highlights here. Of course, uh, Ric Flair, amongst other things, uh, after Di- Diaz finishes with you, I dare you to try guys like Dolph, Brock, or Fit. Fit Finley, of course. Oh, you're welcome for your gimmick. And there's a nice picture of him holding up his shoes. Um, and uh, uh, Kurt <laughs> Angle, very funny little guy. Why don't you get your head out of Dana White's ass? <laughs> Kurt Angle, a guy that was tr- going to try MMA for a bit there. Uh, Roman Reigns, you're the size of my leg. Shut up. <laughs> um, uh, Sorg, Sorg. The caveat to Romans. <laughs> Roman, God bless him. Can't even get trash talk on Twitter, right? Because he spelled your wrong. Oh. <laughs> and he responded with oh. the correction. Uh, of course, Chris Jericho. Sorry, pal. No, way, Twitter needs an edit button. <laughs> yes, it does. Twitter Absolutely. needs an edit button. No Absolutely. Way. We all have to live with our misspellings. Oh. I think it's only fair. <laughs> Um, Chris Jericho, sorry, pal, no disrespect to you, but my fights are legit. Unlike the fixed fights you have in UFC, I'll embarrass you. <laughs> and of course, Sasha Banks, bring it. I'm sad that this one wasn't in here. There was one, there was one by Taz where he said, um, he said, oh, you miss Virgil's too. I, oh, no. Well, okay. Well, go, let me know that one in a moment. But Taz, Taz had one that says, like, ser- it was basically like, seriously, there's two and th- two or three guys in every wrestling locker room that would destroy you. So mm. I'm paraphrasing because it's not in front of me. Uh, what did Virgil say? I'm so interested in this. 
<laughs> oh no! Now no, that I, I think I, about I, it, I got Virgil it. versus Conor McGregor is probably the match I would I, do. I, oh I man! But I, I read Virgil's tweet, and twenty dollars just mysteriously disappeared from my wallet. <laughs> I, I have the tweet, Sorg. Are you ready? I, ha- I have it. Go for um, it. From at the real Virgil, so you know. Almost hey, Con- hey, Conor McGregor. Let me know when you are ready for me to bitch slap your cornbread ass and show you what's up. And then, hey, at the notorious MMA, I'll bet I have a bigger dick than you. That was Virgil? <laughs> that was Virgil. Uh, by the way, this is a good time to remind Hashtag everybody. Money. This is a good time to remind <laughs> everybody that the legend of Virgil and his traveling merchandise table is available at <laughs> IndieWrestling.us on digital download for $16. All he does is plug, 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 no matter <laughs> what. what. Now, now, the real so thing was a natural. Right. It was a natural plug. Uh, unlike, the, unlike, God damn it. <laughs> Matt, well. Matt, what you were going to say? Oh. <laughs> Matt? I, I, I just wanted to throw this out because this has been a discussion, too, that's happened ever since this whole little firestorm has started going. Where did, where does the work begin? Is it, is the very genesis of this whole thing in Connor? Did Connor, like, consciously give the dynamite soundbite knowing that it would get back into WWE because he wants all those WWE fans to buy the pay-per-view that he's going to be main eventing because he just saw how much they did for Brock um, at UFC 200. And now he wants some of that Brock money. Um, And how many of those wrestlers in WWE are giving a work response and how many of them are taking Connor too seriously and actually like real trash talking back to him? See, you know where I'm going at yeah, you, you like how much of it, and, and actually, and that's kind of the discussion too. Is how much of this is maybe um, a little bit of a work shoot thing to lead to maybe him working with WWE? Uh, but I, I don't, I don't know if we're at that point. You know, it it kind of seems like it since there's a lot of WWE stuff back and forth between Brock, between, and I shared this over on the Facebook page. But there's actually a CM Punk documentary about him getting to his first fight, um, and a tremendous trailer for it. Also, oh, it is. Making. I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As in him fight, right? Yes. I still don't think it's gonna happen. There you go. Uh, I mean, I, it, so so uh, there there's there's that connection, and and really, I, I I don't know. I don't regularly watch UFC because I tried to back in the day. And I got sick of it on Spike TV. Um, um, the most interesting thing with the UFC often involves the WWE. Right? Um, so, I, I don't know. I think it's it, it, it's interesting to see where they're going with this. Does this lead to like a, a WrestleMania match? I don't think so. Like we were saying, like with who, you know? Yeah. I, I think, I think WWE I think- definitely covets Connor. Because they know that he's one of – in the same reason that they covet Ronda Rousey because they know how popular she is and she does huge buy rates and they know if they could bring her in that that would bring some UFC fight fans, maybe crossover appeal a little bit and see if they could pop a big number. But yes, he's definitely a WrestleMania I don't, kind of guy. I don't think he'd be a draw for WWE. I think Ronda would be because she's been like on the program and part of it. And she seems a bit more affable than Connor does. Well, I think like I think the bring, bring Connor in is kind of like I, I mean I, I guess it doesn't plus really they, work they set it's up kinda like when they brought Mike Tyson in. Plus they set up Brown, Ronda too, so it's like you know oh they could bring her back and it wouldn't seem like just completely out of the blue, you know. Whereas yeah, like you said, they got to find a reason to bring Connor in that isn't just oh you know we're striking just because the iron's hot because he's talking shit about us you know it's i don't know something that's a little more complimentary to them in in the fantasy booking i think it also needs to be con- uh, considered you know he is a featherweight that means he's mm-hmm. five that's nine right. and 170 pounds so mm-hmm. like he would look really good against the cruiserweight classic that's going on in wwe gonna, network i was gonna say against the winner of the cruiserweight classic yeah bring and, in sign zack sabers jr to kick his ass oh, 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 anyway, oh um, yes think, the difference between ronda and connor in a way is because like i think ronda came with like a, a lot of wrestling fans already kind of knew ronda's story because they knew kind of she had that connection to uh rowdy rowdy piper and she they knew that she was a wrestling fan i think maybe while wwe 
kind of may have wanted to do business with Connor and maybe they still do that. Maybe they didn't feel, or maybe Connor didn't feel, or maybe even WWE fans don't quite feel exactly how Connor would fit into WWE. So maybe this on Connor's side, maybe is him consciously defining what his role would be if he ever came to WWE. Like, okay, you don't know what I would do or why it would be interesting if I came in. I'll make it interesting for you. I will solidly position myself as the biggest jerk heel outsider in history. That way, when I do come in, all of you will want these WWE guys to kick my ass. And, and so he's already got that character. Role. Yeah, so now he's kind yeah. of defined his role for everybody. So now when he shows up, I would assume that WWE fans will not be like, yay, Conor McGregor is here, although I'm sure there will be some of that. There will be a lot of, boo, this is the guy who doesn't like us. This is the guy who thinks he's better than us. Um, and maybe that works better well, in the long run. Also, when Ronda came in, she was a bit more of a multimedia star because she was in like one of the Fast and Furious movies with The Rock. Mm-hmm. So she already had that kind of easy in, like because that was coming out like that week too. Yeah. So yeah, was, like, yeah. like that was the reason Rock was at Mania was to promote Fast Seven mm-hmm. or Eight or whichever one it is, Fury <laughs> or Furious and the Furious or something. Fastest and most furious assists. Yeah. <laughs> Rod is definitely the bigger star, but let's not sell Connor too short. But yeah. All right. On that Short. note, as I mentioned, <laughs> kind of <laughs> as I mentioned, kind of a half uh, plug over there. But um, uh, yeah, IndieWrestling.us, uh, where you can see some of Rob's fine work, of course, uh, including uh, a, a, the recent IWC uh, uh, wipeout, include guys like Robbie E of Impact Wrestling, Ray Rowe of uh, Ring of Honor, and uh, so many more great guys up up and comers, up, uh, as, such as uh, Dylan Bostic, who. Uh, you may have remembered as one of the guys that got squashed by Ryback back in the day. Uh, he's come a long way. Uh, so, or uh, Renegade Rematch Wrestling Alliance. coming soon. RWA. Yeah. Yeah, that would be oh, amazing. Oh, man. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's the big news, too. Ryback has been released officially this week. So uh, look hey, at... Plumber, I've got an idea. This one's free. A okay. secret on a pole match? Shoot, I want the rematch, man. Yeah. Wait, so who's the third guy? Like, who is Dylan's partner in that? You know, if you can get them all three of them together again. <laughs> Did he do anything? I have no idea. I, I, I no. don't know. They didn't even use, like, the same name, so who knows, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, not all of them became like Colin Delaney. Joe Barone or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Devin Devinson. Exactly. (laughs) Check out that or RWA's Resurrection 2016. Some great shows, and we got some great trailers to show them off. Actually, if you go to the RWA Resurrection uh, page, we also have a a special 360 view of the ring entrances uh, for the night for a few of them. Uh, But go check that out. Check out IWC. And, of course, The Legend of Virgil and his traveling merchandise table all over there at IndieWrestling.us. And I actually just posted a bunch of new videos, um, um, old IWC shows with the likes of Samoa Joe, with the likes of Christopher Daniels. And uh, King Kong Bundy was an, on, on an International Wrestling Cartel show. That was a surprise when I posted it earlier today. Hmm. So really digging in into the archives. These shows are available for like for two ninety nine to four ninety nine for the older shows. Like We're talking like 10 years plus ago on some of these things. So go check them out. A little bit of old school, a little bit of new school, a little bit of the future, a little bit of the past. Go check out IndieWrestling.us and sign up to the newsletter so you can uh, know when new titles and sales come up. Uh, we're actually hoping to have a, a really big um, sale coming up very soon for our one-year anniversary of IndieWrestling.us. And Matt Carlin is a big part of that as well. So around, yep, around the Indies, go check it out. Yep, Guys, I want to talk about food. Yes. Particularly... Sorg, Sorg I like food. Particularly, yeah. I mean, look at us. Uh, you know, we like food. Yeah, some of us more than others. Uh, but uh, uh, certainly, uh, there was the raw was food related, and I, I saw these videos playing. Uh, raw, raw, definitely. Uh, we had cake. We had the most expensive cake ever, apparently, <laughs> according to them. Apparently, they paid cakes. In... cakes. Listen, listen. Worth... The Belgian should save it for pay per view. <laughs> Than most people make in their entire month, right? Sir. Whole month. I I can believe that for me, but um, 
but so so I had some fun and and I went to I struck out to the Facebook page and I asked everybody their favorite food related moment in wrestling. Best use of food in wrestling inspired by that. And thank you everybody. Uh Rob, you you had a particular uh um um uh thing happen at Five Star Wrestling that you you witnessed. Well, we had like they had gotten I forget, like a new ring apron or something when we got our new ring. And I guess like WWE sells their old one. You know, some of the other promotions might too. And they kind of cut them down um, to what did I think our ring was like 16 by 16 and there's this 20 by 20 or something. But they, yeah, they, they, they sell them off. And uh, so we had an old WWF or WWE like, you know, canvas that had clearly been used in some sort of birthday or wedding segment because there was like a huge stain in the corner that looked like, you know, it had been frosting or something like that. So it'd be interesting to try to find out where that came from. But I guess you'd have to ask somebody I'm not really talking to anymore. So <laughs> That's right. Or we can ask Mike yeah. and his contacts with mm-hmm. the uh, WWE there. You know, you can, you can always look it up, right? <laughs> I mean, I Sorg, I can't disclose everything that I learned. No, no, the cake secrets, of course. <laughs> there, so. there, there are a couple NDAs that, that are still pending. Oh, no. Oh, Although no. I will say I found it ironic that um, Lana got thrown into the cake despite wearing a short skirt and a long jacket. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Th- those girls are usually smarter. <laughs> mm. That's fair. That's fair. I'm trying to remember how the how the song goes. But. You should you should never get into a wrestling ring that has food in it. Basically, mm. never should. It's just, no, it's I, just I, asking I, for trouble. The, the or contract you signing out, if there's a table in the ring, you know, don't go near it. The oh, the worst oh. thing, and I'm surprised they've never done this. No one's ever brought in cookies and tea to a contract signing. That would be the worst. <laughs> Utter I tell you what, Regal, Regal might try it one of these days. He might. Um, he might do it for Bailey and Oscar. Yeah, maybe. Asuka. Um What the hell was I even talking about? Oh, the minute you combine like the pseudo <laughs> the pseudo wedding with three cakes in the ring like the potential energy for chicanery was at critical mass like the minute you see those things combined in the ring you're like this is someone's going into these cakes and it's probably the one wearing all white everything <laughs> all white everything also well mike you had you had a favorite one that you mentioned on the facebook and it's one of oh. my favorites as well oh i did sorg um and and I didn't even have to elaborate. I just typed one word, Milkomania. God damn it. Oh. The billion dollar princess has just become a dairy queen. <laughs> Food and drink in wrestling. God nice. damn it. Kurt Angle just spraying the alliance with milk. Just totally just gross. totally ripping off the stone cold beer bath. Just and throw like Seriously, if you've never seen this segment, just find it. Unless you're DJ Lunchbox, because there are a lot of puns. <laughs> there are a lot of puns. But they're Jay, all well earned. Oh, they are so well. J- Jim Ross must have spent 45 minutes looking up milk puns. I <laughs> like like he he's talking about. Oh, Kurt Angle's bringing out the heavy cream. <laughs> <laughs> like this is not homogenized like he's pulling out every <laughs> fucking milk pun that you can possibly squeeze out of that utter if the oh, part, the, the part oh, of phrase. oh wow but, <laughs> but it, it, it's it's one of the best segments in raw it it is easily the highlight of the invasion I was, I was going to say that was right in the middle of the invasion angle, wasn't it? Yeah, it would, well, e- it would have been post invasion, like going into SummerSlam or something. It was, I believe, it was going. It wasn't going into SummerSlam. It was going to into whatever pay per view they had in Pittsburgh. Well, that was Unforgiven, well, which was the month after invasion. So yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. because it was going into that because that's where Kurt won the belt. Right. So, he won the belt from Austin. So yeah. It, oh man, just because I went. Oh. Yeah, I went to that, and I think that had the only pay per view match that Chronic ever had. Oh wow! In the WWE, I think. Oh wow! <laughs> Wasn't that when they got destroyed by the APA? Yeah, it's something. Or, no, it was it was Taker and Taker and Kane. Oh right, it was Taker and Kane. Yeah, 
and it was for like the WCW tag titles or some some crap like that. Yeah, and then, and then Taker and Kane went to wrestle um, DDP and Canyon. Mm. Oh jeez! Who better than Canyon? I had fond memories of that pay per view actually. <laughs> First, glimpse, maybe that's what the match was. I forget what it was. It was some of those guys getting killed. <laughs> First glimpse well, of Karen Chronic Angle. only had one match, and I don't even think they made it to pay per view. Like it, I think no, they I, just. They, I thought they were just brought on one SmackDown, got destroyed by the APA, and were promptly fired. No, they wrecked like Kai and Tai or somebody like that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a shame. I loved Chronic. All right, really back did. back around to this. <laughs> of course, uh, yes. uh, I thought uh, you guys remember a few weeks ago. Like we were really happy the 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 final food fight of of the last era. Uh, that epic, that epic, just God, massive mess they opened Raw with. Uh, was that Fourth of July? Oh, Fourth of July. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. I mean, that was a work of messy art. Or. <laughs> Sorg, there's still a looming issue about that food fight. Who hit um, Kevin Owens with the cake? I was going to say, who was the pie man on the grassy knoll, Sorg? <laughs> who was it? Mm. We need a WWE documentary. Who was the pie man on the grassy knoll? Who Coming was soon. the third pyre? Coming soon. <laughs> I just, I'm just bummed that with SmackDown on Tuesdays now, we're never going to get the Thanksgiving night food fights ever again it oh just, we'll we'll get it before uh, they'll always be right right here right in my heart <laughs> <laughs> oh boy the things you can do with the turkey man hey, uh, you know impact is on thursdays uh, oh <gasps> maybe maybe i'll have the next network they they end up on i don't know <laughs> we don't I don't we know. don't have pop tv out this way i don't know. you don't have the tv guide channel but you see, I learn something every time they change networks. I find out what these other channels are, <laughs> and then I find out I don't have them. So, <laughs> yeah, it's always a surprise yeah, no, for me. Too. No, but when you find out you don't have El Ray and your cable TV package is useless, yeah, that's yeah. Not really good. Not good. <laughs> I, I really hope, uh, Sorg. There needs to be a Lucha Underground Thanksgiving episode. <laughs> oh yes, there does. I wow, mean, I, I think it's too late now. But complete, complete if with, there's a season four, complete with Native people, Americans, we know people listen. Well, we, they're always done. Much. They're always done by the by the time the holidays. I know, but that's why I'm telling them now. It could be a one-off <laughs> special, right? Like, like I mean, yeah. we work for Star Wars. Um, also from the Facebook, uh, Andrew says Piper smoking uh, Snook in the Life head with a day. coconut. Uh, John says the entirety. John says the entirety of Bastion Booker's gimmick. Uh, of course, Malcolm Mania. Zach Rain says uh, he got force fed a hot dog during a no DQ match. Oh, there's that. Um, was it was with Tommy Jimmy DeMarco? Dream, yeah. Is it is it Jimmy DeMarco? <laughs> it sounds like Jimmy DeMarco, it and it sound, sounds like a different kind of hot it dog. It seems like it seems like well, it, well, related. There was there was when Tommy Dreamer was in. But they said force fed, right? Yeah, well, force yeah, fed. That, force that's fed. why I assume it was Jimmy <laughs> DeMarco. Uh, related. <laughs> speaking of Dylan Bostic, there there was when Tommy Dreamer had his run last year with IWC. Um, there were there were instances where where Bostic and Ray Lane were feuding with Keith Hot, another friend of the show, and they would come out with cupcakes and then throw cupcakes at him and then throw come out oh, with hot man. dogs. But then but then Tommy Dreamer would have a match later in the show and find the hot dogs or the cupcakes that were like left on the ground and eat them. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it was like and four matches remember, later. It, yeah. it, this was not like the next match. This is like an hour yeah. later, like two <laughs> matches, an intermission, and another two hours, two matches later, Tommy Dreamer comes out after the gimmick table's been working. These things have sat out in the light for like an hour and a half. Sorg, you, you have to remember. Tommy, They're under the ring. Yes, yeah. Tommy Dreamer <laughs> oh. is pro wrestling's dizzy devil because we can play a game always of will Tommy Dreamer eat it because he will. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He ate a urinal cake on Raw. Yeah, he'll eat anything. Doesn't make him much of a game. Nope. Yeah, we'll nope. it's fun. Well, anyways. let us know your favorite food fights, guys. Uh, Matt, sure, I you... got one. Yeah, let's say, Matt. I don't think you shared one yet. So go ahead. I got a couple for you. First of all, a very recent one: green beans, broken Matt Hardy. They are exquisite. Um, God, and damn also it. a large two female competitors. The largest inflatable swimming pool you've ever, ever seen in either Jello, quoting or gravy, mm-hmm. or any one of these other things. 
and um, just turn them loose in there. When women's wrestling was women's wrestling, and we could watch it with pride. Hashtag now we've feminism. got this dang catch as catch can, <laughs> high flying stuff. Back then, when it was stuff. Wrestling. It just. Do you remember? Do you remember when? Remember when these athletic contests. It's just, the, uh, the beautiful people. I'm pretty sure had a triple threat Jello match. <laughs> like it was back when uh, Impact was on Mondays, I think, and Kevin Nash was on Impact. And he wow, was, that was a very specific period of time. I, so yeah. It was one of it was not long. <laughs> but yeah, I remember the beautiful people. They were like try like. They literally said they were out there to get ratings, so they yeah. had a triple threat match in Jello. Triangle Jello match sounds amazing. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, I missed that impact. Sorry, you didn't make it on. Matt, Mondays. I'm pretty sure it's on YouTube somewhere. But what Probably. are the rules of this kind of thing? Um, the rules are there are no rules. Uh, <laughs> yep. Wow. Well, on that note. Uh, thank you, everybody. This is a perfect time to talk about food. There's a little bit of it left. Uh, our friends at Slice on Broadway that support the show. Whenever we have people in here, not so much at the 10 o'clock hour with the Wrestling Mayhem show, but definitely uh, our, our, our friend Dutters was in here earlier tonight. Uh, check them out, sliceonbroadway.com if you're in the Pittsburgh area, especially in uh, the Broadway Avenue area of Beachview in the south of Pittsburgh, as well as uh, uh, Main Street over at Carnegie, PA. And, uh, of course, PNC Park, their new lo- location, the home of the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates over there on the North Shore. Go check them out. I know Katie took her zombies. She's a zombie wrangler for, for Scare House. They were, it's okay. The zombies, the zombies were out uh, on kayaks during the anything that floats uh, during the regatta. Uh, but, anyways, there's a lot going on there. You should probably follow the Scare House as well on Facebook. Um, plenty of videos there. Uh, so, yeah, shout out. Shout outs and check out our friends sliceonbroadway.com, pgh underscore slice, or look up Slice on Broadway on the Facebook and Instagram. Let them know you heard about them on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We'll be back. We're going to talk about the big question, the Scooby-Doo movie. You know, important topics. Spoiler warning. We'll be right back. (laughs) Spoiler alert. (laughs) Let's talk tech. Tech news discussions from the people in the industry right here in Pittsburgh. Online, gadgets, startups, and more. Check it out at awesomecast.net. We are back, and there is so much great conversation. Some are, some is going to make it on gold. Some is not going to make it on gold. <sighs> Guys, what did you just do for Mayhem Gold? <laughs> oh, what did we do? Four and a half minutes in heaven, sorry. That's what we just did. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, first, I, I have talking a... about acts of God beating impact. Uh, I have a what? few corrections that I need to address for the Mayhem Universe because I know I will be tweeted about it at yep. MadMike4883, and I apologize. This this is um, the, the Knockouts triple threat that I spoke of um, was indeed not a triple threat. I apologize. It was a, one, it was a strict one-on-one ah. match between uh, Velvet Sky and... And Lacey Von Erich with Madison Rain as the referee. Oh, um, very strict. Was, very strict. It was well, also it, too. it was also mud, not pudding. So technically, it should not have been involved in our discussion of food-related matches at all. However, I'm still glad I thought of it because, oh man, that what Melter gave it five and a half <laughs> something <laughs> inches, maybe. Was it negative five and a half? No, no. I think Lacey half. got a concussion on the edge of that kitty pool, though. No, no, uh, Matt. He gave it. That's five why and she half. had to retire, right? Yes. Matt, <laughs> Matt right. Melter gave it five and a half inches. <sighs> Sorry, Dave. Yes. Wow. Sorry, Dave. Yeah. Hey, if there was ever a week where you were like, I, you know what? I just don't know if gold is worth it. This is the week gold is worth it. You don't want to watch this match alone. You want to watch it with us. Pay a buck, yeah. watch this minutes. match, go and and move on. And, and, and at least for this, at least for this. Well, <laughs> I, I I put my money where my mouth is because if you put WWE uh, with a, a childhood property, uh, I'm going to pick it up on the first day. And and this is the third time I've done so. This time it's Scooby Doo and WWE Curse of the Speed Demon. Very prominent role with the Undertaker in this, by the way. 
Uh, so Ooh. I have some thoughts on this. I don't want to spoil anything. There are some surprises. And, of course, with cartoons, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of lead time with stuff like this. So, of course, we all know, you talk about how formulaic Raw has been over the last several years. Uh, Scooby-Doo <laughs> is... Uh, <laughs> Sorg, Sorg, would someone have gotten away with it? Formulaic. For, would someone have gotten away with it if it wasn't for those pesky kids? I mean... <laughs> I don't want to spoil it for you, but... Let me guess, McMahon in a mask. Well, that leads me to the big question. That leads me to the big question. Who do you think did it? <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. I swear on. I haven't seen it. I have not seen it. So the big question is, who done it? Who done it? I want to, like, in your mind, if you were booking a Scooby Doo movie with WWE superstars, <laughs> who do you think done it? There's I'm not so allowed. Many inappropriate answers for this. I'm um, not allowed. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. When was this written? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, I, Sorg. Is CM Punk in this one? <laughs> Sorg, I have a legitimate question. Okay. Legitimate question. Uh huh. Um, what is the it? We need to determine who done. Uh, you know what? Uh, <laughs> and I'm not saying that you're going to tell me who did it in this particular movie. You can tell me. Oh, okay, okay. Well, just I just, general. I just, if you were, if you were writing, if you were booking a Scooby Doo WWE crossover, <laughs> there's two. There might be more for all that we know. Who done it? And if you want to plot the vice, you can insert that as well. Oh. Uh. Oh, oh wow. god! It takes place at a wrestling show, doesn't it? <laughs> no, no, no. This takes no, no, place. This one, oh, this oh, one yeah. does wacky not. Races. This is basically uh, wacky races you're pro wrestling. Of the Crush Scooby hour. Scooby Doo WrestleMania. Oh no! Yeah. Scooby Doo has twisty rockets. <laughs> <laughs> what, oh what? man! Does that come with a digital copy? Shaggy has the annihilator. I lent. I lent the. <laughs> it's a no, no, no. This is a Blu-ray, DVD, and digital copy. I lent the DVD to Katie <sighs> earlier tonight. So, so she could see this because she's got to see this. <laughs> so, and I still have a Blu-ray that I'll probably never use. Um, and also, by the way, there's also a Monster Jam Sword Scooby-Doo. Send me that Blu-ray. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will live tweet it for the mayhem. Um, anyways, well, hand breaks the thing. Um, anyways, but no, but if you were booking the Scooby-Doo WWE uh, uh, three movie, what would you do? Who would be the guy? Who would be the bad guy? Who gets unmasked? I can't even remember who it was in the first one. I, I just know the, Bruno. Was it, it Bruno? No, it wasn't a wrestler. It wasn't a wrestler. Oh. Yeah, I don't think it was a wrestler. He wasn't supposed to be in the wrestling. Yeah. 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 So, so, so I don't know. So, I wanted to tickle Spoiler your brain on this. What do you think? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, Sorg. Sorg, I have it. I have it. Okay. In in my third version of WWE and Scooby Doo. The culprit would be Kalisto. However, because it's Scooby Doo, they're like, that can't be Kalisto. Let's rip off that mask and find out who you really are. They rip off the mask. Big show. Oh. <laughs> it's a swerve, bro. <laughs> swerve, All right. Swerve, All right. I, you have watched your Scooby Doo. <laughs> Well, sw- Sorg, show title. Well, it's a swerve, bro. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I don't know. What do you, any of you guys have one worked out in your heads? My brain is overwhelmed with inappropriate answers. <laughs> go for it. Go for it. Jimmy Snuka? Oh. <laughs> I almost spit seltzer all over my laptop, Matt. God damn you. <laughs> Not oh, proven. Yeah. What? <laughs> Sorry, I the wife is watching this flippy stuff on the other channel, so it's uh Matt, shit. Matt, just just tell her to watch the mud wrestling match. <laughs> she did. She's not a no, tell her, tell her to like watch most it things on TNA. It's, it's it's only four and a half minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't even look like real real what? mud wrestling. It didn't even look like real mud wrestling. Basically, no. wrestling in trouble. Yeah, I, I know. Well, they have to water it down. It's TNA. They can't afford real mud. All right. Um. 
They live in Flo- they're they're in Florida. Florida. Yeah. How do they Florida. not get mud in Florida? Florida hasn't yeah. had real mud <laughs> since 1982. Sorry. It's like swamp water. I'm sorry. This thing has gone off the rails. <laughs> no, no. This has gone better than I could have imagined. <laughs> well, it's a swerve, bro. <laughs> So it wasn't my, my answer is definitely Jimmy Snuka. Um, <laughs> all right, all right. What about you, Rob? Oh God! Like I said, Vince in a mask. I, I would. I think that would be the obvious. I think, I think that was actually the end of WWE Slam City. Was it? Oh God! I think so. I don't know. I think it was. Oh, and okay, was maybe it's too obvious. That, that was also <laughs> the security guard episode of Swerved. Where's the ghost of Vince Senior? Yes. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, fuck yes. The ghost of Vince Sr. Junior, what are you doing? Why did you go public? Why are all these African American gentlemen here? Why isn't Bruno still champion? Why are we charging $12 for cereal? <laughs> Damn it! All right, you though. know what? Sorg, there's a kid like, raw right in front of me. He had like a box up the whole Sorg, after tonight's show, I'm going to make a fake Twitter account, Vince Senior's Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait! That has, Please to, do. That has to already exist. Let Please me, do. Let me just check. No, Please do. there's no way no one's thought of this. <laughs> And it better be good. Someone better be cutting it to keep good use if it's actually there. Oh, uh, if not, we will well, buy it from them. <laughs> if you guys, of course, uh, Wheels from the chat room says Bray Wyatt would be a good one. How have they not worked him into something like this? It seems to make sense here. Um, but no, so so I watched it. I watched it today. I watched it again um, because I, I was doing trying to fit some work in while, while I was trying to fit in the movie. So I had it had it kind of viewed for tonight. Um, All together. <laughs> What? It was also a a, a, a hot um, um, hour and twenty minutes. So so it was it was really easy to do that. It is literally everything you could imagine a a WWE wacky races would be slash crush hour is finally a thing. Okay, uh, it, 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 I I'm amazed that all of the wrestlers are also mechanics. Um, <laughs> are they also all still on the roster? Yeah, and also still on the roster. Some amazing ones. Um, and, and this is going to be partial spoiler here. Uh, some of the people that pop up here. Uh, but uh, wait, wait, let me guess. Let me guess. Let me guess. Let me guess. Is Brodus Clay in this movie? No. <laughs> no. Oh. No. No. Uh, he, he he's a fixer, not a racer. But I can tell you that all of the roads are in this. They all of them. All of them. All the roads. Ooh. All of them. Did you say roads or rogues? <laughs> no, 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 no. All the all the roads family, the dusty roads mm. family, oh. is represented in this. Mm. I was gonna say all those roads lead to WrestleMania. <laughs> uh, in fact, Dusty is like one of the main characters in this, um, and also may have been a suspect at a moment. Uh, but <laughs> and he wasn't a ghost yet. Oh my god! Could you imagine if Dusty would have done it? Oh. I don't oh, think they no. would have released this movie. Uh, right. <sighs> my my favorite things, I, 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 you know, Sin Cara, I thought stole the show uh, in the first one. <laughs> Rob is not. <laughs> Did you see the first one, Rob? Which Rob? which which Sin Cara was it at the time? You don't even know. Yeah, you don't even know. You have no idea. It's the it's the one that didn't talk. He like pantomime things, and there was like the secret origin of Sin Cara they revealed in the first one. It was amazing. It's just Rob, like why... I'm going to let you borrow my son's copy of yeah. Scooby Doo <laughs> WrestleMania Mystery, and you will understand what's going on. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Way better than the Flintstones <laughs> crap. Uh, but anyways, uh, it, it, it 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 is definitely that wacky races vibe. Also, amazing that every pro wrestler also knows how to work on a car. Um and the other the other ones you know, this is, is Sin Cara really stole the show for me in the first one right this time it was Stardust a little bit um also Rusev and Lana are amazing in this thing <laughs> uh it, it it's I mean it, it's everything you expect every time like somebody goes in and has a grand scene their their theme music plays in the background um you know uh, I saw this on like kind of the extended preview I watched yesterday. Uh, in, in in preparing for this thing, but like like just Rusev yelling Rusev Machka 
and then throwing his car into gear is just wonderful. Um, so it's it's fantastic. I recommend it if you were a fan of Scooby Doo, Scooby Doo growing up. If you're a fan of WWE, I, it's worthwhile. At least rent it. Um, it's you're you're gonna have fun with something like this. So it's better than twelve rounds. It's shorter than Raw, <laughs> and it's shorter than Raw. So all if I know anything from having met wrestlers, it's that none of them know how to work on cars. <laughs> <laughs> how many? How, exactly. <laughs> how many? How many? Yeah, don't drive. <laughs> can't make it to the show because they broke down somewhere in Ohio. Uh, yeah. I mean. Bron- well, uh, to be fair, Bronco's car was on fire on the way to the last show, and he still made it. <laughs> Flaming and all. Holy crap. Yeah. Well, guys, um, well, are you guys going to watch it then? Or is is it on the agenda to Rob? Are you I don't ca- know. It, I, I feel like we've already made several different better versions. <laughs> I'm not going to deny that. I'm not going to deny that. I, and I got to say, and I don't know if you've seen the Flintstones version, but um, so like the Scooby-Doo movies still feel like... <laughs> What? What? No, sure. I was thinking about other other USA Cartoon Express uh, <laughs> things. We need to get like a Turbo Teen crossover. That would be fantastic. <laughs> we just dropped Cartoon Express. Hey guys. <laughs> Maybe no. Mr. T and and those gymnast kids he hangs out with. You know, Sorg. I have a question. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um. Now, now we've had Scooby Doo. We've had Flintstones. Mm-hmm. The Snorks. The, <laughs> um, who would be in your WWE meets the Jetsons? Well, they would all be at least third would, generation. Would it be? Would it be, <laughs> would it be Max Moon Techno Team Two Thousand? Oh yes, it'd be about three hundred and third generation at that point. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like it. Yeah, like, there's uh, there's this um there's a time warp just like in the Flintstones versus the uh, yeah Flintstones versus the Jetsons. Flintstones meet the Jetsons, and there's like there's a time thing that happens. Yeah, and, the whole green alien has to be on it. What's his name? Quick. Kazoo. Uh, kazoo, kazoo, yeah. kazoo, kazoo has to yeah. cause it. Yeah. The great yeah. kazoo. Thank you, kazoo, not kazoo. No, no, kazoo, kazoo, kazoo. G-A-Z-O-O. Gotcha. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so who's in it? Um, I would say, I would say definitely like uh, 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 John Cena. There's no John Cena in this movie. How about that? Oh man. Oh. Uh, what was animated John Cena injured at the time? <laughs> He was too busy doing the Kids' Choice Awards. Um, yeah, just yeah. Of all things, he was probably like, "I can't do this movie. I'm doing Trainwreck at the same time." So. Right, right. Kind of a conflict of interest. Yeah, yeah. It's like that Hulk Hogan movie was not for kids initially. Uh, yeah. Well, no, not the sex tape. No, 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 no. <laughs> no holds barred. Am I right? Uh, there was, there was oh, one hold barred. Oh, he works out, <laughs> guys. We got a voicemail. <laughs> we have a voicemail. And I oh, hope I we got have good news, Mike. I got good news. Yes, Ghost of Vince Senior is out there on Twitter. If you want, to oh, go get it. Man, go get I it. have, I have a, a sign task up for it. ahead of me tonight. Sign up for it now. <laughs> All right. Like I said, you guys can you can uh, drop us voicemails at four one two two zero six WMS zero. And uh, or or that email address, good times at wrestling dot com. Good times, good times, good times. Mm-hmm. You can do that, and so uh, just like Daniel has been and did this week, let's see what he had to say. Hey guys, Daniel Tyre here. I hope you guys are having a good day. Hey, um, I'm pretty sure that this whole draft idea between Raw and SmackDown, if it's such a good idea. And we're looking forward to pay-per-views. Have you, you guys have not talked about bragging rights in a long time. I mean, ever since this po- ever since this draft started. But I was just wondering, is it possible that we may see the return of the pay-per-view? You know, bragging rights. So, just a thought, because usually with, when we see Raw and SmackDown, you know, split up like this, we usually get a pay-per-view like that sooner or later. So... Just want to give him input on that and see what you guys think. Um, and I'll hope you guys, I'll get to, you, get to listen to you guys again on iHeartRadio on Wednesday. All right, then talk to you guys later. Bye. 
first of all, awesome that he listens to us on iHeartRadio. Uh, wow. Second of all, uh, yeah, bragging rights. No, it's coming back. It's it's coming back. As one of the towns here in Pittsburgh that had one of the two of them, <laughs> like, yeah. like they're trucking out. What backlash is coming back? Backlash. I like backlash. I mean, we're not we're not good enough to watch backlash. We're not good enough to we're get good enough to watch backlash. We're gonna get oh. we're gonna get roadblock in Pittsburgh here later. Like no, they're gonna the Clash of the Champions is gonna be a thing. <laughs> There's they're never gonna been do a no way out 2005 again. Yeah, yeah. Mick Foley's gonna fall off a cell again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> gonna they're gonna turn out. We're gonna get. We're gonna get Taboo Tuesday. We're gonna get. Uh, uh, <laughs> we're gonna get. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> this Tuesday in Texas. <laughs> Tuesday in Texas. <laughs> Tuesday in SmackDown. Man, Raw ran Taboo Tuesday pay per view on the network opposite SmackDown. That then I would know that the brand extension war is on. Until that <laughs> happens, it's not a real. That'd be amazing. <laughs> That'd be amazing. <laughs> I, think we, I think we got a good Tuesday. shot at getting this Tuesday in Texas, though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Wrestling Classic, uh, King of the Ring, uh, uh, Bash of the Beach, Bash of the Beach. <laughs> no holds barred. The movie, the match. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not that one. Not that one. <laughs> <laughs> Down, 12 rounds, the movie, the match. That's not That's not very PG. Mm-mm. Oh, no. Oh, uh, but, no. Uh, to, just to try to answer his question, because he was nice enough to call, um, yes, eventually they do have to have a match, and they don't need bragging rights to do it. That's what Survivor Series is for. Yes. But, yeah. As yeah. I said, yeah, they're probably going to get bragging rights eventually, because it's the punishment that we all get eventually. From. Well, okay. And I still own the trademark. Here's the other question. Here's the other question. Did any of you enjoy bragging rights as a concept? No, I, no, I enjoyed no. it as a concept. No, I enjoyed it as a concept. But Matt's right; it should have been done at Survivor Series because that's what Survivor Series is for. It's mm-hmm. team on that- team battle. Like, and they should finally do what I've been saying they should do for years. There was one Survivor Series where they had um, every match was a team on team match. And then the winners of those matches faced off in the Ultimate Survivor match. Yeah, they only did that in 90, I think, right? Yeah. Because that was when you had Hogan and Warrior and Tito Santana. Yes. And right. and it was like against all of, you know, it was like Rick Martel's team. Was, or no, like no, DiBiase all, or somebody. All DiBiase's team, which included yeah. Power and Glory, I believe. Oh. Yeah, and like, and I think, like I Rick, think Rick Martel. Martel. Yeah, I think Rick Martel was on that. <laughs> um, but yeah, like. And you could do that now because you can have like a SmackDown team versus a SmackDown team match to you know to keep feuds going and stuff like that, and then take the winners of that and make Raw versus SmackDown, and the winner mm-hmm. gets the bragging rights trophy. You don't need a whole pay per view to set up the bragging rights trophy because guess what? It's a trophy for bragging rights. And you know what? And this is one of the other problems with bragging rights is that in wrestling you need stakes. You know, to make the matches interesting. And really, is there any lower stake than bragging rights? It literally means nothing. It, it, why are we fighting? Then, so I can brag about it. Well, <laughs> that's pointless. <laughs> and then that was like, you know, they put like 14 guys on the match. And then that left nothing for like the rest of the card, too. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. We did get Randy Orton almost blowing up John Cena with the pyro. Oh. <laughs> that really happened? Yeah, yeah, that was I a Pittsburgh. Nexus was around during that one. Ah, uh, maybe. <laughs> whenever, whenever I talk about the Nexus, I start to cry like a soccer mom talking about the Shield. <laughs> hey, there was a there was a Nexus uh, there was a Nexus name drop <laughs> with David Tonga uh, reminding everybody that he was on Nexus with uh, Heath Slater, and so was Daniel Bryan. Still- Did David Otunga remind everyone that the Nexus reunion will now be happening on the Indies instead of in WWE? <laughs> real to me. They're just, oh. they're just waiting for Slater. Oh, waiting for Slater. Come oh. on, Slater. Get back, Slater. <laughs> We're waiting for you. Michael Tarver can't wait forever. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, th- I think Michael Tarver can. He, he can wait forever. He can and has been. <laughs> yeah. All right. He's still on that cell phone. He's still on that cell phone waiting. Whatever happened to Husky Harris, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, same thing that happened to Derek Bateman. Uh, Derek Bateman. He was never in the Nexus, by the way. I no, know, that, but that's he, he's he he should have been. No, 
<laughs> Believe me, Michael you... McGillicuddy and Husky Harris was damn far enough, all right? Oh, you know who else was in? Mason Ryan. There's another goober who never should have been in the Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Well, also a free I forgot about that. He's on the Indies. So, wow. Nexus versus Bullet. He was around for what like two months, independent right? wrestling? Hmm? <laughs> Yeah, Mason, was Ryan say, was, Mason Ryan was only around for like a few weeks or something, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't mm. long. It's kind of like one of those <laughs> big guys. You've seen it before. Big guy. Tall guy. <laughs> no, me. Not much else. <laughs> no, he's all right. He's, all right. Is he, he's, still, he's still at it. Back in Europe. Something. All right. Isn't he like Welsh or something? Yes. Yes, he's, he was. Why do I remember yeah. that? Jesus! Well done. Wow! <laughs> wow! You are you're the. That's like I, you didn't question yeah. the fact that Matt Mike you are you are actually Adam Survivor Series teams from 25 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> well, Matt, Matt, you have to remember, I am a wrestling historian. I I, I will give. I am actually going to ex- tell everyone why you actually remember these Survivor Series teams because we did a wrestling game show that was nothing but Survivor Series teams. <laughs> <laughs> so we had no choice. I should burn our memories. I should really repost those because they were probably pretty fantastic by themselves. So they were, they were was was yeah. Hogan's team always the Hulkamaniacs? Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But who yeah. else was with it? It had to be. Um, oh my goodness! All what right, guys, it it's time to learn. What did you it's learn? Time. What did you learn from wrestling this week? <laughs> Uh, Mike? <laughs> yeah, thanks, Sorg. What? Um, this week I learned from wrestling that Brock Lesnar was slacking at WrestleMania. Dean Ambrose Ooh. told me so. Is that, like, is, is that not the most Ooh, awkward I... of the interviews? All, all Dean wanted to do was some and half with a chainsaw, and Brock was like, no, no, no. I want to fight <laughs> MMA later this year. Come on. That's all he wanted to do. You know? I just want to try this thing with the chainsaw, Brock. Hold still. I just want to get my chainsaw spot in, brother. Come on. <laughs> hey, hey, it's like, Brock, I'm, I, I don't think this is a good idea. <laughs> you don't get sodded half for free, Brock. Get paid for it. <laughs> I mean, I learned that I could never have a conversation with Dean Ambrose. Why? I, I just feel like he's way too weird. <laughs> Mike, 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 yeah. think about the people we've had, like, on the show. Yeah. And that's yeah. the guy that's too weird? Um, Sorg, did you watch the interview? I did. He couldn't speak one sentence without umming and looking away and dodging questions. I'm like, what are you, like, he seemed like he was on something. Like, he couldn't answer a straight question. He looked tired. Honestly, he looked tired. Tired from what? He didn't even work that night. Oh, travel? Who knows? Who knows? Maybe from lack of activity. Maybe he took a nap for three hours and he just, just woke him up. No, that's what the viewers did on Raw. I, I, I fell asleep during the, <laughs> during the Austin podcast. I watched the good bits later on. But uh, Dean is so um, mysterious. He has an aura <laughs> of mystery that surrounds him. And he will not give it up for anyone, not even Steve Austin. He has no Twitter. He has no Facebook. He tells us nothing. All he does He's is run off around. He's off the grid. Building, building, no next or to as nothing. off the grid as you can be for being he on TV every week. He's as off the grid as any professional wrestler can be. And that's what makes him kind of brilliant because he's actually like – He's actually like a larger than life figure because he refuses to let us into. He refuses to give the the unwashed masses any access to the real him. Do you, was and did you feel like this was the most unsettled? I felt like Stone Cold was. <laughs> yeah, I still haven't seen it. But I yeah, like, I just keep seeing the little bits I, of it. I did love I'll have Steve to watch Mike. it after this. Pressing him about his childhood, where Dean's like telling him, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, uh, I didn't really like the school thing. I, I dropped out of school, and uh, yeah, my parents weren't around that much. But I had a great childhood. I had a great childhood." And Steve's like, "Wait a minute, you never went to school. Your mom and dad were like were like not around, and you were like on drugs. Apparently, you had a great childhood. Yeah, well, well, well maybe, yeah." Uh, uh, 
<laughs> the part when he the part when he looks stone you cold didn't like the school gimmick. The part when he looks stone cold straight in the face and says, "Where are you reading this stuff? The internet." <laughs> oh, yeah. he asking, Where are you getting this stuff, on Steve? <laughs> and Steve's like, I got it from Wikipedia. God damn it! Anyway, <laughs> Rob, how about you? What'd you learn this week? Yeah. I, no, I'm not sure, but I'm not really digging SmackDown all that much. So I kind of learned that SmackDown is still just kind of SmackDown, even with the new coat of paint on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> um, I learned. I, I, <laughs> I learned. I learned that Triple H goes through a lot of suits, according to this movie, um, because there's several points <laughs> where he just this suit rips off. Like, like at one point he doesn't even like use his hands. He just apparently flexes, and the suit just like disintegrates. And he has his wrestling tights on. The underneath. wardrobe budget on the Scooby Doo movie is <laughs> amazing. Absolutely <laughs> amazing. So wait, wait the Sorg? I'm gonna stand here and flex, and then my shit's gonna fly. Sorg, are you telling me that in the Scooby Doo movie, Triple H stole Cesaro's gimmick? Yeah, kinda. Yeah, kinda. <laughs> God damn it! Son of a. <laughs> and that's why Cesaro's not getting over. There you go. There you go. Well, uh, from the Twitter, uh, we had a couple of responses as well to uh, what you learned in wrestling this week. Uh, uh, Matt Matthew uh, Brodouche on the Twitter says, WWE hires a new Kathy <laughs> Kelly every week. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tweeting, Matthew. <laughs> Brodouche. Um, Brodouche. <laughs> can you repeat that again? Please? He said, Brodouche. WWE hires a new Kathy <laughs> Kelly every week. Really? It's pretty much there was a new chick like what was her her name was like charlie or something and i'm like where did it get her like i remember when these girls used to start on nxt and then maybe we see them how long did it take renee young to pop up behind that too large of a desk on smackdown uh it, you know after <laughs> all like these conference years. table yeah uncomfortably large smackdown desk <laughs> it's like it's like renee you need friends to fill that table <laughs> and Booker like, can't be at every show. Twelve <laughs> friends. <or> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Shucky Ducky gives some friends. Um, and also <laughs> Jeff uh, Red Setter four seven eight on Twitter says even Jericho Owens feuding with Enzo couldn't save Raw. I will disagree with that because it was fantastic. Um, <laughs> but uh, but no, that's what he got. So let us know what you learned from wrestling this week. Is our big question. We throw it out there. Uh, uh, Tuesdays a little bit before uh, a little bit uh, towards the end of Smackdown actually on Facebook at our Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group or at so Mayhem Show yes yes Matt uh, Carlin has one from the chat room oh oh I'm sorry I was trying to get to that That's yes cool. I'll read it for you go for it Hot Wheels learned that WWE 2K17 is looking sick as hell I want it it was all cast so. there you I go well guys video games Again, everybody, please check everything out. WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to the show. Continue the conversation at Mayhem Show on Twitter. Wrestling Mayhem Show on the Facebook group and Facebook itself. Like it. Get the videos. Good times. Good times. Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. 412-206-WMS0. Thank you, Daniel, for uh, uh, calling in. Thank you to our tweeters. Thank you to our live chat rumors. Hi, Wheels. Over at live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. We do that. Wheels. We go live 10 p.m. Excuse me, I'm getting the hiccups. 10 p.m. Eastern Time every Tuesday, shortly after SmackDown Live. Rob Brown, you can see him ringside usually with the IWC, International Wrestling Hotel, and the Renegade Wrestling Alliance these days. And uh, Cage Fury coming out on what, the 20th? Yeah, yeah, that's going to be Cage fun. Fury the 20th, and then RWA is the 27th. Yes, that is. That's going to be interesting. Also, my brother's birthday. I believe my brother's I will wedding. have the gimmick table set up at the next IWC show so you can get your autographed pictures of Rob. There you go. There the you pictures go. Are though, he's in the background with his back turned and a camera on his shoulder. But Just, he's there. Actually, there was a, there was a, uh, there's a certain wrestler. At, at a certain show that I went to that happens at a certain mall uh, and he had pictures out <laughs> of him in action in another certain promotion and I saw the back of Chachi 
in the picture, <laughs> like very prominently in the picture. I'm like, dude, you're you're in his you're in his his promo shots. And he's like, I better be getting a fucking cut off of that. What's a cut of nothing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are flying off the table. Right? Whose promo, who's promo shots were they again? <laughs> I'll tell you after the show. No, uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But anyways, I just imagine there's not a lot to be made off of anybody's promo shots. I don't know. No, 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 <laughs> probably not. Probably not. But anyways, thank you everybody for joining us. This is a blast. I love doing this every week. Got some great interviews coming up on the Indie Mayhem Show, including IWC's Wardlow and Connor Claxton of Vicious Outcast Wrestling and CZW. Keep an eye out for those here uh, in the coming weeks, and so much more planned. We'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. You guys are cool.